Tau overflows. Can it be true that sex can be over? Yes, it is true. And you need not repent for it. Do not look back. Instead, look ahead. Something greater is going to open in your being. Something like a lotus which will give you absolute fulfillment, contentment, freedom, independence and individuality. For the first time, you will be able to fly alone into the vast sky of the existence. You, your need for the other has disappeared. And that is what sex is, the need for the other. And in this state of orgasmic experience within yourself, without the help of anyone else, you become capable of sharing your love, not bargaining, not even hoping for something in return. In other words, this is what I was talking about, friendliness, friendliness towards the whole existence. Nothing is greater, more glorious, nothing is more of a splendor or a miracle. There are two things which are not necessary of the same age as body. The lowest of these two is well understood by the psychoanalysts. The higher is still beyond the psychology Psychology is, is still struggling to stand up. It is crawling on the ground at the lowest level of human energies. Hence, about the lower, it has found a few fundamental truths. One is the mental age. A man may be 70 years old, Yet his mental age may be only 14 or vice versa. In cases like Mozart, when he was only 4 years of age, he was able to play on musical instruments like a great master. At the age of 5, he was, he was already becoming famous. Even the great masters of the music could not believe the phenomenal energy of Mozart. At the age of five, he was almost as mature mentally as very few people become at the age of 70. Psychology has accepted that body and mind do not grow together. Sometimes, most of the time, the mind is lagging behind and the body goes on growing. A few times, in rare cases, the mind grows ahead and the body lags behind. When Emerson, a great creative and sensitive man, was asked about his age, he said 365 years. The people who were present could not believe it. They could not believe that Emerson, a man of truth and a very innocent man, a man loved and respected by all those who could understand the heights of consciousness, why should he be lie? Why should he lie about such things? 365 years old. He does not look even more than 60. What to make of it? Finally, one man asked, perhaps I could not rightly hear what you said. Will you please repeat it? Emerson laughed and said, why are you going in roundabout way? 
why don't you say directly that you cannot believe that my age is 365 years then another man said now i have to ask you you look only 60 at the most and you will have to give us evidence that you are 365 years of age a man of your integrity is expected not to lie emerson said i am not lying i have lived so much in 60 years that you will be able to live only in 365 years according to my intensity and totality of life i have lived 60 years as much as an ordinary man will live in 365 years i am not lying it all depends on how you live how intensely you live your life that determines your age meditation changes your life patterns completely this has is still to be recognized by the psychology but the psychology of the enlightened one knows perfectly well that consciousness can go on growing it need not grow simultaneously with the body and the age of the body so the inner age enhances moves with the experience and the realizations while the body moves in its own way adi shankar the founder of the systematic philosophical system for hindus died at the age of 33 he became enlightened somewhere about the age of seven when he was seven his father had died he was the son of a poor brahman the mother was only living for him the only son at the age of seven shankar asked his mother that he wanted to renounce the world to become a recluse can you conceive of a child of seven years a seven year old child thinking of renouncing the world a seven year old child thinking of renouncing the world must be another mozart a mozart of spirituality even at the time you are ready to go into the grave you do not want to renounce the world the mother said your father had died and you want to renounce the world don't you think of me don't you think of me and shankar said i can only promise you one thing before you die I will be present so in your last moments you can die peacefully but right now allow me to renounce the world I want to become a recluse a sannyasi and go in search of that which is the mother refused not to hurt her Shankar remained for a few days more. One day he went to the river. He used to go for his bath every day to the river. But that day he insisted that his mother should also come with him. The mother was a little concerned. Why is he insistence insisting on her to accompany him when he became absolutely adamant if you cannot come i will not go for a bath then i cannot worship and 
then I cannot eat either. So the mother had to go. The mother was standing on the river bank and the little child, a seven year old, was caught up by a crocodile. A crowd gathered and there was nothing that could be done. Both feet of the boy were inside the mouth of the crocodile and Shankar shouted to his mother, Now there are only two possibilities. Either you give me the permission to renounce the world to become a recluse and become a sannyasin or the crocodile is going to eat me. It is up to you to decide. Therefore, be quick, O oh mother. It is a strange story. How did crocodile conspire in this? And the mother, of course, immediately shouted, I allow you, you can become a recluse. Even this much will be a solace to me that you are still alive. And the story goes on that the crocodile immediately left him and disappeared. Must have been a very saintly crocodile. Whatever be the case, perhaps it is only a parable because when two, truth has to be explained, we have to use parables. Adi Shankar at the age of seven must have conceived, convinced his mother that either she had to allow him to be a recluse or she had to be ready for his death. How he managed it, this is a different matter. But one thing is certain, he gave her a clear-cut choice, either death or sannyas. Obviously, poor mother had no choice, she allowed him. At the age of seven, Shankar became a recluse. In the whole history of the world, there is no other case parallel to Shankar. Somewhere between the age of seven and eleven, there is no historical record of it, but it seems just between 7 and 11, he must have become enlightened. At the age of 11, he started writing his great com commentaries on Upanishads and on one of the greatest and most complicated subject, scripture uh, in India, the Badrayan's Brahma Sutra. The at the age of 11, it is almost impossible even to understand it. And Shankar wrote the greatest commentary. It has defeated all the great commentators of the past and those who were to come afterwards. Nobody had been able to go beyond these flights of consciousness and bring such tremendous meaning to almost dead scriptures of Badrayan's Brahma Sutras. The way he interprets is, imposs is possible only after enlightenment has happened. Each small wor word, the way he gives a turn to its meaning, something which was looking very Ordinary immediately becomes extraordinary and he has touched the touched that transforms everything into gold. By the time he was 33, he had written all the great commentaries on all the great scriptures and he had traveled all over the country and defeated all the so-called philosophers, theologians, priests, etc., and at the age of 33 he died. Consciousness is not limited to your physical age. Consciousness goes ahead of you, your body, so do not be worried.